this video we're going to take a look at template libraries, how to create templates and some of the other tools involved with our template libraries. Uh, template library is an ITL. MoDOT has their own ITL file that can be utilized and saved off into any project directory and then modified. And that's the suggested use for our template libraries. Uh, it's not really suggested that you go out and create your own templates simply because everything is set up with the MoDOT templates to work with um, say cross sections or earthwork um, or creating surfaces and so the easiest way to do it is to take one of our MoDOT templates and modify it or take our components and then create your own uh, template based on those components so to begin with we're just going to show a little bit about template libraries uh, and how to use them so our template libraries, the way we get to those is we're going to be under uh, the Open Roads Modeling and you can be in any design file in ORD to do this. You don't have to be in any specific one. Uh, the template libraries are kind of their own uh, item out there. So we're going to take a look at Open Roads Modeling and then we're going to go to the corridors. And this is where you create all your corridors, but to be able to create a corridor you have to have a template. So we have this template area underneath the create. Okay. And there's uh, three items under here. Create the template that opens the ITL. Import template, which is something uh, currently that I probably wouldn't suggest using because uh, what that tool allows you to do is create uh, line work in your design file, in your 2D design file, and then import that into your template as its own little template library item. Um, so that would have none of the regular MoDOT standards applied to it, none of the feature definitions or point names or anything like that. It would just create a, uh, a template for you that you could use perhaps on just a, maybe a small outer road or some kind of a, a, custom, um, a custom corridor. And then there's display template, which will take the template that you have in your library that you choose and we'll draw it out into the microstation file. Okay, let's go ahead and take a look at the create template. <coughs> okay, create template will go ahead and pull up the uh, standard mo.itl library. Okay, it's called mo.itl and you can see that at the very top up here. We're going to kind of go over this dialogue and show you what the items are in here uh, for this video. So the first thing uh, we'll take a look at is over here on the left hand side we've got the template library uh, window and this is where all of your components and templates are stored. Okay, that's the left window over here. At the bottom of that window you can scroll to the left or the right to open those up. Uh, and at the bottom you have a library and you have an active template. So this is your active template out here. Uh, the active templates that you have out there on the screen have things applied to them, such as parametric constraints, display rules, uh, your end conditions, and you can look at those types of things and it will have all the different points out there uh, and how they were created and what their current information is and then you can go modify that. So if you had a template that you wanted to have say 8 inch thick concrete on uh, the parametric constraints you can go find that those bottom slope points and you can say that those need to be 8 inches and then you don't have to modify the template you just do a parametric constraint. Okay so <clears throat> that's the difference between library and active. I'm going to go back to the library here. Um, if we take a look at opening one of these up let's look at the components so we can expand out that. I'll expand out let's say I'll expand out pavement new and there's other folders underneath there here's an asphalt pavement with shoulders A2 shoulders ag base, rock fill base, ag base, A3 shoulders you can expand one of those out and you can even modify the width uh, of that so if you want to be able to slide that over you can do that Okay, so if you just single click on uh, that top component right there, that's asphalt pavement, one lane with ag base, asphalt shoulder. Down here at the very bottom you have a preview for that 
you can see you're not editing it. This is the edit window out here to the right, and that's the one that you would be working with. Okay, so currently just selecting it once just displays what that template looks like. Okay, if you wanted to open that template up and modify it, then you double click on that and it will add it to the window over here on the right. And this is the edit window. Okay, the edit window has at the top the name of the current template that you're working on. Uh, you can see all your components are being displayed right now. If you want to see the constraints instead, you could switch it to that and you can see in here everything that is con constrained uh, throughout this this template. And we're going to talk about constraints in a different video, but you can see those through there. Display point names. Sometimes your point names can get in the way. So if you don't want to see them, you can turn them off. And you can display all components that way as well. So if uh, display all components, if you had uh, a display rule set up to where uh, you might see a median pop in here at a given location based on what's out in your current drawing. You could click on this option here and it would display everything involved with that template. Okay, so that is your window over here. You can zoom in, zoom out with your wheel, uh, mouse, scroll, and you can also hold that middle mouse button down and you can slide it left and right so you can pan around. At the bottom you've got uh, locations or <clears throat> how many uh, what distance it is across the bottom here okay. usually that's in feet so you've got zero is your start spot you can see the pink box up here that is going to be your template origin and then you've got the different points that make up uh, that component red red ones are constrained green ones are not constrained um, and then you'll also have a yellow one. So the red ones are constrained both uh, horizontally and vertically. And then if you have a yellow one, you either only have horizontal or vertical or slope or some other uh, constraint. And we will talk about constraints in another video as well. Then this is uh, basically elevations based on the zero point. So you have a zero zero location, which is where your template origin is located. Across the bottom of that window, you have all of your view tools. So you have your zoom in, your zoom out. Um, on this one here, you can zoom out and zoom in as well. Zoom up and down. As you can see, you can adjust that ratio in there. Okay, you have a uh, zoom in tool. These are kind of like tools that we have in regular MicroStation. You can draw a window around an area to, to zoom in. And then you have your fit view. Okay, so the mountaintops is the fit view. Uh, the back arrow and the head arrow, that is your undo. So if you create something out here or you modify a point or, or something and you decide you didn't like that, you could undo that or redo that. Uh, your last option in there is your dynamic settings. So if you pick on that, you can get your dynamic settings box up. And we're going to have a whole video based on uh, dynamic settings and how to use this, this tool. This is kind of how you can accurately enter information into your template to get something like a, uh, a length and a width and a slope um, all out there on these lines. Okay. Uh, up here at the very top... You've got your file information, so you can create a new ITL if you want. Typically what we'll do is either open the MoDOT ITL or your project ITL, and we also save as a lot of times uh, your MoDOT ITL into your project. Edit, you can just basically copy and paste, rename throughout there. Add, you can add uh, simple components, constrained components, unconstrained in conditions, all those different types of things can be added into uh, that edit window. And then under tools, we're going to take a look at some of these options uh, in a different video, but we've got the template library organizer, which uh, has a list of all your templates that are available, either in the design file or in the ITL, and you can work with them with the template library organizer. If you wanted to be able to copy uh, a template that you had in another project, 
you could go with this template library organizer and copy it into this uh, template library here. Okay, you can do feature name overrides. A lot of these things we will take a look at. Some of them will be possibly in your Road 2 class. Uh, and then your options in here. Well, there's dynamic settings. That's the same as the button that you saw down here. And then there's options in here. Uh, template options, you can come in here and apply fixes so that if you had a left and a right side of your roadway, it could put an LT or an RT in front of it. Um, okay, you can do some other uh, if you had a preferences, which we don't have really have a preferences for our templates, um, but you can do your steps and all kinds of different things here in the options. Okay, the last thing that we have in there <coughs> is a test option, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go down to a template over here on the left that I know has some end conditions to it. So I'm going to come down here under templates. As you can see, asphalt pavement with shoulders, A2 shoulder ag base. And I'm going to take a look at this first one in here just by double clicking on it. There is a test button over here to the right. If you go ahead and push that in, what that will allow you to do is go out here and test the template that you've got out there and see if it's any good or not. So there's a failure report. If you ever you want to get a report of if this is going to fail in some locations, you can do that. Check for priorities. Uh, this one, we don't have any in-condition um, conflicts, so basically in, in these templates you can have a ditch and a fill slope and all that, and they have priorities based on whether you want the ditch or the fill slope to be first or second, and if they're both listed as first, then you might get a priority conflict. And one has to be first and the other has to be second. You can also check for duplicates out here. Uh, what we use the test for mostly is to come out here and take a look at a surface and how this is going to project on your end conditions. And the way that works is you hit the uh, surface that you want to base it off of. You can use a surface slope and you hit the draw button. And the draw button will go out there and put in what happens if the surface is at this location. So if it's at, above it, it's going to give you a ditch. Once you get below a certain location, below the ditch it'll go into a fill slope. Okay, So we'll close that out. The last thing we'll do is kind of show you how to uh, drag components out onto the screen if you needed something. So I'm going to go back up into uh, our pavement new and that one we were in before, asphalt pavement one lane. Now let's say that you wanted something out here on the right and in condition out here on the right. Uh, what you can do is just kind of scroll down. Uh, what I would probably do is copy this instead of editing this original one uh, is copy it, but I'm not going to save what I'm going to do here, so I'm going to just show you how this works. So in your in conditions, let's look for those. You see that here. Let's say that I want a ditch on this right side. So I'll do in conditions. We'll look at the ditches, and I just want this first ditch that's in here and you kind of see in the preview window how that looks. To get that to be out here on the end of the shoulder all you have to do is left click and hold on that word ditch slide it out it'll have a green point and you want to drop it off on the red point. You see how it turns white there. We're going to drop it off when it turns white and it will merge those points together. If you zoom out now you can see that you have a ditch out there. If you want, you could test that. Go out here and hit the draw button again, and you can see it's going to draw you a ditch. If you get below the ditch right now, nothing's going to happen. But you could add a fill slope the same way, and then the fill slope would take over. Okay. Now, if you needed to add something to the left side, let's say that I'm going to go into, I'm going to close up in conditions and templates, and I'm going to go in and Let's say I want to add a shoulder to this left side. We're making a, a ramp, possibly. So we can go back into Pavement New. And let's say that I'm going to do a Pavement Only. I'm going to do, we've got Asphalt up here, so I'm going to keep with the Asphalt. Asphalt Pavement. And when I left click on that, you can see right now it's, got, it's going to place it on the right hand side. Well, we have the option to reflect it or mirror it. So if you needed the same thing on both sides, you would mirror. Right now I'm going to reflect it to have it go to this side. 
So we're going to do it the same way. We're just going to left click and hold and drag it out there. And you can see it's going to put it on the wrong side. So while you're holding the left mouse button down, you can hit the right mouse button. Then you can let off of both buttons and go down and hit reflect. And that will flip it over to the other side. And then you can place it right on that green point. Okay. So that's how you can drag these different components out here and attach them to other components. Now let's say that I decided I didn't want this end condition over here. Well if I undo twice I also get rid of my left pavement. So in order to get rid of something that's out there you can right click in a blank area, hit delete components, and then you're basically just going to draw a line over what you want to get rid of. So anything that crosses that line will be deleted. Okay. Then once you've completed everything that you, you like in here, that's when you would do a file save. Okay. So once that's completed, I'm going to go ahead and close out of this. And I'm not going to save my changes to this one. The other portion of this template drop down that I wanted to look at is just this display template. We're going to skip over the import template. Um, it's easy enough to use if you have something on that you've drawn out for a template, but it's not really a, a suggested practice. So we're going to jump to the display template and we're going to go out here and it's going to ask for uh, what template that you want displayed. So you can hit the little triple dots right there. Okay, and we're going to go down into, uh, let's take a look at templates. Let's do a concrete pavement with curb and gutter, and we'll just pick this two lane. So once we pick that, we can say OK. Come out here on the screen, and we can accept that we're going to use that template, and then just a location. So we can left click a place out on the screen to place it. And what that does is it just draws in a template out here just with like regular microstation lines uh, that talks about what that is. So as you can see individual components are drawn out. Uh, you could use this later and and do an import template into another template library if you wanted to using these these lines that were created as well. Uh, but that concludes the create template section and we'll do another video uh, talking about how to create templates, uh, all the parents and child relationship, all the point tools, everything involved with that. 